It's been a beautiful year in the garden for my first year. It's the beginning of October, time to harvest the sweet potatoes, amend the soil, and get the spinach in for the winter crop. For me, this is the best part of gardening. It's about to get dirty in Georgia. Let's take a little walk and see what I have going on so far. These are my sweet pea seedlings. I have 48 in this bed, planted around four inches apart. As they grow, I'll be adding another level of string every four inches. They tend to attach to the cloth string a lot faster than the bamboo stakes. My Georgia collards are in and they're doing pretty well, but it looks like we got a little infestation going on. I'm gonna take our cold pressed neem oil, a little bit of seventh generation plant-based soap, and we'll address this issue right after we finish harvesting our sweet potatoes. The original plan was to first harvest the sweet potato leaves. We've been eating the leaves all summer long. You cook them just like spinach. After I started converting the garden and putting in all my brassicas, I noticed that the insects like caterpillars were more so attacking the sweet potato leaves. So I changed the plan up, allowed the insects to have their day with the sweet potato leaves so that my brassicas can establish themselves and have a better chance later on in the season. Organic gardening has its challenges, but here's one of my best friends when it comes to fighting insects. More than food for the body, just being out in the garden, watching nature do its job, that's a therapy money can't buy. Here, I'm just thinning out the vines. I don't wanna cut them all the way down to the ground because I need to see where the actual plants are located. Sweet potatoes tend to grow deeper than regular white potatoes, and they love very loose soil, rich in organic matter. Most of my beds I compost in place using a form of gardening called Hugo culture. This works very well with sweet potatoes because they like lots of heat. The purple ones are Japanese sweet potatoes, Goguma. I think I planted six of these and three of the white sweet potatoes, one of which I've already harvested. I planted these in late June, so we're harvesting right around that 105 days. I hear a lot of people say that they allow their sweet potatoes to go all the way into the frost, but when the plant starts to die back, and you get the largest yield that way to my understanding, but you also run the chance of losing your texture as well as flavor, and they can get a little stringy the larger they are. The information I found seems to lean towards 100 to 120 days this is preferred a little more with the professional growers because the sweet potatoes tend to have a more uniform shape, better fitted for grocery store shelves. There has to be some truth to that because these look pretty much like the parent potatoes that I grew the slips from. I say potatoes because that's what we've grown accustomed to saying, but actually these are not potatoes. They're tubers and belong to the family of morning glories. Rich in vitamin A, vitamin B, beta carotene, and antioxidants, which helps us reduce the free radicals in our bodies, thereby reducing the chances of cancers and cardiovascular disease. And did I mention the leaves are edible also? Speaking of the leaves, they make beautiful house plants. As I wrap this video up, I'll take a few clippings from the vines, place them in some water until they root. Once they root, plant them in some soil, grow them in the house over the winter time, and have fresh slips for next year's planting. 25 pounds from eight slips in 105 days? I think I can live with that. By his hand, we all are fed. TR Rehab.